Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead slash Papa's Place. Guys, today we finna continue forward on opening our pool for 2022, what Papa does to his pools. Now, if you've been following along, you've seen on the first video, it was more or less just uncovering the pool and seeing how well the Indy Swim winterization kit did on my pool and how much leaves and stuff I had in my pool after approximately six months of being closed. And it looked dang good. I was really shocked at how good it looked. So I'm going to give a thumbs up to the Indy Swim winterization pool closing kit. And then on the second video, y'all seen, I set up my game Sand Pro 75D sand filter. Installed the Intex wall hanging skimmer. And installed my Plaris 65D back and guys if you want to go back and see a video on how to assemble all that i have videos step by step how to assemble them and hook them up to a pool like this coleman pool i try to attach the videos above i can't attach them all above i'll put them in the description below or you can go to my playlist under the pools related and you'll find all them videos so after opening getting everything hooked up, I've been running it, just letting it run 24-7 for about three days now. We had a good rain come through with some wind, blow some more stuff in there, so I had to get out here and skim some stuff. And of course, if you remember on that second video, I was telling you, you got to keep that screen clean on that Polaris 65. You got to keep your basket clean on your pump and keep your skimmer cleaned out. And I was doing that three, four, sometimes five times a day. Because when it's just a little bit of trash in them screens, I slow the pressure down on your pump, which slows the Polaris 65 down. So after about the first 24 hours, all I did was took 16 ounces of this Algae Guard. This is HTH brand, and y'all know I'm not I don't care about brand names. This is just what's convenient for me to get. But even though it really didn't look like no algae in there, you always want to put your little algae guard in there, especially at opening. So I put 16 ounces of this in there, and that's been circulating for about 24 hours now. I don't know if I told y'all, but y'all know we put four chlorine tablets in that floater on the second video, I believe it was, and threw out there as soon as we started the pump and stuff. Four, four tablets is a lot, but everything in this pool was low, even as good as it looks. Everything tested low. So now that it's been been three or four days, three days, four days, I can't remember how many days I'm on now, we're finna shock this pool. This is four and one super shock. It's HTH brand. But guys, when that water's cold like that, this stuff don't dissolve good. So I don't just pour mine in there. I learned that the first time I opened this pool up. Don't just pour this granular in there when your pool water's so cold. You can dissolve this in some warm water, and that's what we're about to do. All right, guys, all I got here is a little bucket, kind of like a little gallon ice cream bucket. And it's got some warm water in it. I ain't talking about super hot water, but warm enough water to, to melt these granulars. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to take this little brush here, and I'm going to stir them around to help them dissolve. See that warm water, they dissolve pretty quick. Now 
I ain't gonna pour all this in one spot. I'm actually gonna pour a little bit all the way around the edge as far as I can reach in there. Now guys, we're going to let that just do its thing for about 24 hours. And then when you see me back, then we're going to test my pool water and see where we at. Now, I know some of you pool experts out there is going to tell me putting four chlorine tablets in that floater and then shocking that pool, my chlorine is going to be high. Well, guys, I don't care if my chlorine is a little high right now, because it's a long time till it's going to get swimming time for that water to get warm enough to swim in and the temperature outside. And we're going to get a lot of rains before then, so I don't care if it's a little high, but right now I'm low. But after 24 hours of this, we're going to test it. And if the pH is still low and the alkalinity is still low, which I'm predicting it's going to be because that we tested it when we opened the pool and it's showing it's low. I'm going to take some of this Clorox brand pool alkalinity increaser and put that in there and you got some pool pH up. Now I grabbed this just because our local Walmart had it but what I normally used was just plain old baking soda. Baking soda will bring your pH up and your alkalinity up. And what's the good thing about baking soda, guys, it don't matter how much baking soda you pour in there, you can't get to your pH extremely too high. Baking soda only bring it up to 8.0. So if you, this baking soda actually will bring your pH up if it's low, and if it's over 8.0, it'll bring it down because it's going to equalize it out at 8.0. That's the good thing about baking soda. But when I test it, according to how bad it looks, I may go on and try this stuff since I purchased it. If it ain't looking too bad, I may just use my baking soda and save that for later. So guys, in the snap of my finger, it's going to be about 24 hours later give or take just according to what I'm doing at the time when I get ready to finish this little project. Alright guys, it's the next day. That was quick, wasn't it? It's actually about 36 hours later. But guys, right now I'm going to get up there and I'm going to show y'all how clear this water looks after I shocked it. And then after I show y'all that, we're going to come back down here and we're going to test this pool water and see what we need to do at this point going forward. So I'm going to give you all a shot from this angle so the sun won't be blaring in the camera. But you can see shocking this pool. Plus I added the steps today. Really cleared this water up. I'll try to give you all a shot from up above here on the deck. Like I said, I don't know what the sun's going to be doing from y'all. It's pretty bright. And I don't know what y'all can tell on camera, but shocking it really makes it clear. So now let's go down there and test this water. So again, I'm just testing with the Clorox pool strips, the six-way strips. I don't know if y'all can tell, but the 
total hardness is just on the okay, maybe between okay and low, which I don't do nothing about the hardness, no way. The total chlorine is, I'm gonna call it not very high, I'm gonna call it high. The chlorine is high. So the chlorine and the total chlorine is somewhere from high to very high, which is what I was expecting at this point. But see why I don't put nothing else in it at that point, guys? Look at the pH. Now the pH is okay to slightly toward the high. Total alkalinity. Now it's low. It's low to very low. Stabilizer. I don't worry about it. It's showing it's low to very low. So... With that being said, see, now I ain't gonna put nothing in it to raise the pH to where if I'd have done that before I shocked it and all, I'd have put that in there and it's showing up been high. That's why I don't do it all at one time. So now we've been to raise the total alkalinity. So guys, this right here is a five pound bag. If you read on back, this is says per 10,000 gallon pool, which this one ain't 10,000, I think it's somewhere between 65 and 7, it's an 18 foot pool. But to raise it 40 ppm, it says put 6 pounds. Well on them testing strips, down there on the low, that's only 40, so 40 and 40 is 80, so this may not even get it up there to the ideal. But we're going to put this five pounds in there. But again, I'm not just going to pour this powder in this cold water. I'm going to mix it in we need some warm water and dissolve it first. We're going to put that around in there. And we're going to let this thing circulate for about another 24 hours. And then we'll test it again. That's one of the things I'm trying to get across here. Do one step at a time. Go on and open your pools up early enough. Get them right. That way you can take the time and do one step at a time. You start pouring all this in there at one time, you have your pool so jacked up you don't know which way to go. So do one thing at a time. Let it have 20, at least 24 hours to circulate, and then you can test it and see what happens from there. So I'm going to mix this with some warm water and dissolve it and then pour it around the pool. Hey guys, I may not have got it totally dissolved, but it's a lot more dissolved than if just pouring that in there without putting it in some warm water and stirring it up. to go back and get a little more warm water and melt some more of that. It was still so too much settlement in the bottom. Now guys, common sense tells you when that water is still around 62 to 65 degrees that all this stuff's going to do when you put it in there is settle to the bottom. Then you got to brush it and vacuum it, stir it up to make it dissolve. So that's why I go on and dissolve mine before I put it in there. And like I said, I like to adjust my alkalinity first. And then we're going to let this run another 24 or so hours with the pump running all night. And then we'll come back and we'll test our water again. And we'll look and see what it's done and what the pH needs to do. If you start pouring all that in there at one time, then you may get everything so high, then you'll be trying to bring it back down. The chlorine's gonna come down on its own before swimming time just by the amount of rain and me having to drain the pool and rain and stuff like that. So that's why I don't care if it's a little high as long as it ain't just extremely high. But again, at the snap of my finger, it's gonna be tomorrow for y'all. 
Hey guys, it's been another good 24 hours. We finna test this again. Now I'm expecting my course, my chlorine's gonna still be high, but I'm not expecting my alkalinity to be up to where I need it yet. But I did pick up another bag of that same product today and we are gonna continue on with it one more time. So looking at this strip, the total hardness is looking okay now. The chlorine and the free chlorine is high. The pH is getting better. It's somewhere between low and okay. Total alkalinity is still somewhere between low and okay but we're gonna get it a little better. And on the stabilizer, of course I was telling y'all I'm not concerned with that yet until we get everything the way we want. So, this is the same product. And you read on back to bring it up. 40 ppm's is six pounds, but well, this is a five pound bag, which I that's saying for a 10,000 gallon pool, and this is approximately seven to 7,500. So we're gonna put another bag in there and I'm expecting it to be all right this time. We're gonna dissolve this in water, like I said before. Pool water's cold, so I like dissolving mine and then I'm gonna pour it in there. Hey guys, I forgot to snap my fingers, didn't I? But it's the next day, but it actually ain't but about 16 hours later this time, but I'm gonna go on and test this and we're gonna see where we at. Now we looking good. All right, guys, I don't know if how good y'all can see this. The sun's kind of shining brightly this morning, but the total hardness is okay. Maybe, I'm gonna call it okay. The chlorine is slightly high to high. Free chlorine, slightly high to high, which we know is gonna be that way. Cause I'm, I done this because this we gonna be getting rains and stuff, and it's gonna be a while before we swim, so I ain't worried about that. But look at that pH. That pH pretty much put that right there on the okay. If anything, it may be a fudge slightly high. Your total alkalinity. Look at there, guys. Right there on the okay, maybe slightly high. And then your stabilization. It's right there in the okay mark. So guys, y'all seen how I done this. And like I said, I am no pool expert whatsoever. But I do have a little common sense. You do these steps one at a time because you seen when we started out the stabilization and the total hardness. If you would have just bought a bunch of chemicals and put that all in there at one time, You'd have that pool so jacked up, and you see now I ain't the the pH is so close I ain't even worrying about the pH right now. 
Of course, my chlorine is high, which I knew it was going to be high by me putting all them chlorine tablets in it when I opened it. But like I said, we're going to get lots of rain, and I'm going to be draining that pool down. It's going to be getting fresh water in it. So probably after the first two-inch rain comes through, that chlorine is going to be down there good, and I won't, then I'll start just putting two tablets in there floater at a time. So, on reading these pool strips, if you ain't never looked at them close, each color, I'm going to put my glasses on here. Ooh, them glasses need clean. I've been out in the garden. But each color, I tell you, and I'm going to just use the example on the pH. Down here low is 6.2. It's got it root right above the color. 6.8, 7.2, 7.8. Then you can look on the back of them bags and know the size pool you got and how many gallons it is to guesstimate on how much to put in there. Now that's why when we was doing the alkalinity, I told y'all, I said that first bag wasn't going to be enough. Because I knew by looking at this, it was lower than what that bag was saying it was going to bring it up. But you still safer to start out doing a little bit at a time and bringing it up. You don't want to put a lot in there and get way too high. Especially if it's close to swimming time, because then you won't have time or you'll have to go buy something to make it go back down. So on these videos here, this is... The third video I'm doing from the first one from opening the pool up to see what it looked like after our approximately six months of being closed for the winter. So I learned two things. Next year I'm going to leave my water up so my float pillars will stay up and keep a little more of them leaves out, which it wasn't bad this year. And about three months in, I'm going to go in there and add some more winterization chemical. And then I think it'll be closer when I open the pool up than it was this time. But guys, I am happy with this right here. So all you see me do is put some chlorine tablets in the floater, shocked it one time, and use two bags of alkalinity, P, uh, alkalinity up, which I think both bags are somewhere around, I think they was like $9 and something a bag at Walmart. So to get my pool up and running, and everything's right on the mark right now. I am happy. Another tip, and reason, another reason I'm doing this video, and I'll attach above the video on when I was closing my pool for the winter, because when you want to close your pool, you want all this stuff just right. Then you put your winterization kit in there, and that way when it comes time to open your pool, guys, it everything will be easy to get back on without having to spend a lot of money and a lot of time. But if you like these little videos and it's helpful to you, and again, I want to say, guys, I am no pool experts. I know I get some comments from some people that's pool experts or think they are anyway, telling me my chlorine so high it could damage the liner. Well, that chlorine ain't high enough to damage that liner. And like I said, we're going to be getting rain in two more days. So, you got to look at all that kind of stuff. But again, if you like these little videos and they're helpful to you, please, if you haven't subscribed, reach down there and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. It don't cost you a thing, but it will help me grow my YouTube channel. Give me that thumbs up and share my videos with anyone that you think may be interested in these videos or if they'll help them out in any way. And guys, I have all types of videos on my YouTube channel. I'm Poor Boy's Little Homestead slash Papa's Place, a little bit of everything. But that would be greatly appreciated. And again, I got a website, www.poorboyslittlehomestead.com. You will go to it, check it out. I got some merch. You can go look at the merch, see what I got in there. Who knows, you might see something you just got to have. <laughs> But guys, as always, I hope y'all have a blessed day. God bless. See y'all next time.